for your directions on the last meeting on trying to get a structure engineer. I did post it in the newspaper locally. Uh, nobody ever came up for it. And as of, okay, so no, I, I, I didn't get any calls on that, but just recently the city has gone out and advertising the San Antonio trades, uh, one of the trades for structure engineers. And we did get one bid as of today. We have till five o'clock tomorrow uh, for closing on those bids. And hopefully uh, we'll get somebody to go look at the building finally to give us a better understanding of, of, of how the condition of the building is. So, so I think we're making the uh, decision about having an engineer look at that first. I, I thought you might want to know that. It should be understood that this is a historic district and all the buildings are important collectively. Some buildings stand out as beautiful examples of architectural style while others seem less valuable on the surface. However, a single beautiful building loses value when it loses the context of its neighboring buildings. And for this reason, changes to the exterior of any building in the downtown historic district must go before the preservation board. Demolishing the stein will decrease the value of the property and it will cost the building owner money, as will passing on the cost of an engineer to that building owner. The city needs to work with the owner to outline the necessary changes and come up with an action plan for the building. That plan could include repairs or the sale of the building. Just as the city needs to work to preserve the important part, this important part of our historic district, the building owner needs to understand that preserving the building is the priority of our community and demolition by neglect is not a satisfactory solution or one that will be tolerated. We've had a social media campaign going on this building. There are 270 people that have liked the Save the Stein. Uh, Over 10,000 people have viewed in one way or another the Stein Save the Stein site. And with a very few exceptions, everybody is for saving this building. I'm a little disappointed, Susan, and I don't mean this in an ugly way, but five years ago I sat in that chair over there and told y'all to do exactly what y'all started a month ago and nothing. So five years have gone by where this could have been going on. No, we no, have done enough. something because we got a preservation ordinance passed that I helped to write. And we, we got design guidelines passed that I helped to write. Unfortunately for y'all, does not apply to the situation that we are in today. Yes, it applies to her or any private building owner within this downtown radius. But from a lawyer's point of view, if it's a dangerous structure, y'all have no oversight of us whatsoever. Um, I, I'm just saying. Well, no, I, the city attorney hasn't given me a written opinion on that yet. I have a question. But, but, but Jennifer, so I'm would, telling you this is this attorney's opinion. That okay, if it's good. a dangerous structure, this building trumps anything else that the city has going on. Has, we don't even have to go to city council to order it demolished. Has, she is trying to privately demolish it, which is a different situation. Have entirely. you gotten a, the engineer's report yet? No. no. We haven't. So until that is done, we cannot been say. There demolition issued by this board. We have not we, ordered the building demolished. But if we did today order the building demolished, there is nothing you or city council could do about it. The ultimate arbiter of that decision would be the you, the district court across the street. And I would be willing to go to district court. And that's fine. I'm just let's let's call the spade a spade and lay the groundwork exactly where it is, and that's exactly where it is. And just for clarity, at the last meeting when we pushed it forward, because I've been here 17 years, okay, and in 17 years the building is is was a beautiful structure, still is a beautiful structure. But it's been 15 plus years that the city's been doing this dance. And we had this committee back in the 90s, and it approached Ms. Stein, and I think that there were probably missteps, both with Ms. Stein and the city at the time, that created ill will. And then the committee just evaporated, wasn't even operating for a number of years. I guess it was roughly six and a half, seven years ago when I served on council that I requested that the council reconstitute the committee because we had structures all over town, particularly residential areas that needed to be addressed. We waited a full year before we even touched this subject after the creation of the, of the board. And then it's been five years since we started talking to the Steins about the structure, requesting that they give us an action plan, that they contact us, 
At no point has she ever directly contacted the board. Even the Legoskis, who are good friends and have gone out of their way to help them, were at a loss at the last meeting because she will not communicate to them any kind of direction with the building. In the, in the last 10 years, and I've heard mention people, multiple people mention that they have made Mrs. Stein market offers, multiple six figures back when the structure was in better shape. I know that the county judge at one time tried to purchase it. There were half a dozen people at least that had offered full asking price, and maybe some of the ones in the room at the time now, and at every opportunity have been rejected. I don't think anybody on the board here is intention to create another parking lot. The point is that every day that goes by, the building becomes more hazardous to the general public, and the city being aware of that fact for decades, particularly in the last few years, is wide open to litigation, civil litigation, at the injury of a private party. If something happens there, having had full knowledge of the distressed nature of the building, all we did at that committee was make it clear that in 60 days, if you're not going to participate in this discussion, the city is going to have an independent engineer, structural engineer, assess the property to give an independent view, not the city's engineer, not the, not the property owner's engineer, assessment of what state is the building in, and what's necessary, and I think the $300,000 figure is probably in the ballpark. But we, we don't know that information until we have one performed. And then we also ask that a private market value assessment be given that was not a value we placed on it to reduce and lower its value or that was inflated by the property owner. Using those two combinations, trying to figure out what percentage of the market value would be required to bring the building up to code, that's the information we're waiting on. Once we were given that information, if it became clear that either A, the property owner was going to do zero to effectively change the distressed nature of the building, or be willing to sell it to a private party, which everybody on this board would love to see somebody buy the property, a dollar, a million, who cares? As long as they put their money where their mouth is, and that the private party who owns the property is willing to participate in that process. But if neither happens and the information comes back that it is in fact a hazard, then it's our duty, regardless of our personal opinion of whether the building is historical, it's not, it's significant, it's not, the public safety trumps historical significance. It trumps goodwill and history. Public safety is the number one and only concern of this board. If you had read the website, and maybe you have, and you've, you've looked at anything that we've done, what we've asked is for support for the city to do whatever is necessary to save this building. And if that means hiring an engineer, great. If that means it can't be saved, We'll address that when it happens. This was not an attack on your board. This is a show of support that the community wants to save this building. And personally, I think it probably will have to go to receivership or something like that in order to make something happen. That is not an indictment of this board. We are here to show you that we want to work with you to solve this problem. And yes, it has been a long time coming but we finally got some preservation ordinance in place that gives us some teeth too. So between the two organizations, we ought to be able to force her to do something. So whatever way we can help you do that, we want to do that. But don't get upset that we are trying to show you that we support you working to do something with this building. I don't want it falling on anybody either. So that's where we stand, and that's why we're here, and that's why I'm showing you what other tools we have available to work with this particular project. It's been in existence a couple of years now, and it's not come before your board to discuss. The Preservation the Board is a city-appointed board that was not appointed until the spring of this year, and they did not start meeting till August, and I have no control over that. That would have to be taken up with the, the mayor and the mayor prior. Exactly. This is more of you. So, we have done what we could do as fast as we could do it. Well, the best thing that you could do probably is to deny her a, a certificate and I, of appropriateness. And I am pretty sure that the people that are here are here because they're expressing to you that they are going to deny and, that. And that's